Every month, GameRanks puts together the strangest stuff that's happening in, frankly, a strange world that we call gaming. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, the weird gaming stories of September 2023. Starting off at number 10, a word I tend not to use in normal conversation is horny, but it's one that came up quite a bit in discussions regarding the various companions in Baldur's Gate 3. So, in an interview with The Gamer, director Sven Vinke characterized this uh, bug in the romance, let's call it. I'm just going to quote him. The approval thresholds were too low when we shipped. That's why they were so horny in the beginning. It wasn't supposed to be that way. We fixed it since, at least for some of them. We're still fixing a few of them. Now, maybe you remember this, but we talked about in a previous video the sex speedruns that people were doing with this game. And, hmm, this seems related. Vinky said that this was not intended, especially with Gale. He wasn't supposed to be, like, instantly there. So, is is this going to complicate the sex any percent speedruns? I don't know, but I think we at least have some explanation for them now. At number nine, hey, you know the word microtransaction? There have been times where on game ranks we've questioned if the word has maybe outlived its usefulness. Well, let's just go ahead and say if you got $149 and really want $700,000 in the in-game currency for NBA 2K24, you can make that exchange. That's right, for the low, low cost of your groceries for the week, you can have 700,000 VC. Wow, I don't need VC. Uh, this is not, this, I mean, this is crazy. First off, if you look at Reddit threads about this, they're all making the same comment. Why are we calling it a microtransaction? You got a few people calling it macro transactions, et cetera, et cetera. I think in the previous video where I talked about this kind of thing, I called it just a transaction, but but I'm serious, like, this is how much I spend in groceries a week. I ain't just feeding myself, keep in mind. But seriously, that's money that just disappears into nothing. It goes into a pocket, and there it stays. Because what you get in exchange for it is nothing. 700,000 VC, do you know how much that's worth in real life? Nothing. I cannot pay for groceries with 700,000 VC. I couldn't pay for groceries with a billion VC. They don't take VC at Aldi or Walmart or other places. I don't shop at Aldi. I, they just, it rhymes. Maybe I could buy a little bit more if I shopped at Aldi. Or maybe I should take my VC to win Dixie. See, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm stopping right now. At number eight, a judge issued a legal permaban. Now, it's probably not the harshest element of the judgment he put forward. There was a Destiny 2 cheater who was using Destiny 2 cheats and selling them and making the cashola, which is not something that somebody should do. It messes up the game for everybody who's playing it fair and square. It's not cool. And Bungie has now gotten the legal precedent set that it's copyright infringement because it creates an unauthorized derivative work that violates federal copyright law. I'm actually not a big fan of copyright law, but I'm inclined to agree with this. Where fair use is something that you create some kind of a derivative work and it's protected against copyright infringement because the derivative work does not intersect or affect the original market or use of the content. This is the exact opposite. It also, like I said a moment ago, ruins the experience for people who are playing fair and square. The thing is, yes, companies really don't like cheaters who do this stuff because it disrupts their ability to make money. That is the bottom line of why they would be motivated to do anything about this. But really, it does make games suck for people who want to really actually play the games. So this guy wasn't just legally permabanned. He also had to pay $500,000, which that's a lot of money. I wouldn't say no to $500,000. But just so you know, you think your targets are people who play the game fair. You're selling cheats so people have unfair advantages. But your real target will step on you in court because they like money a lot. At number seven, I don't know if you've heard of Only Up, 
but it's kind of a weird viral game that there are a lot of goofy videos about. It's gotten a lot of traction. It did have a little bit of controversy back in June when it was taken down for including some copyrighted assets, but it only took a day to get rid of them and it was back up on, on Steam. It's kind of crazy uh, that this game got this popular, developed by one guy, and it created a ton of stress for him to the point where he was like, you know what, I'm taking this game down. Our man pulled a flappy bird now if you remember flappy bird came back later and flapped out so i don't know if this is the end of the saga but only up as of right now is gone if you really loved the gameplay there's quite a bit of clones on steam that you can get by searching only up including some multiplayer variants but uh yeah i just it stressed the guy out so much he was just like no now i want to put the game behind me and yes the game won't be available in the steam store soon that's what i decided myself <laughs> which by the way that's not how i would say that i decided upon something on my own but you know maybe he's not a primary english speaker he said he's devoting his energy to a new game called kith that's a completely different genre and setting with an emphasis on cinematography hopefully working with a small team i'm guessing he learned his lesson uh being a solo developer going viral and having to maintain something on his own kind of wild honestly the whole thing and a number six. So, hey, have you bought Midnight Club 2 or, or Manhunt on Steam? Well, for one, you probably shouldn't have gotten Midnight Club 2 on Steam past 2018. They delisted it there for various reasons. A lot of people assume music rights. Uh, but in 2021, it was available for a brief while, apparently accidentally. And guess what? They were selling a pirated version of the game. I don't know how this happened. No one seems to have explained as to why this has happened but uh it also happened with manhunt in fact the manhunt one is how people figured out that the midnight club 2 one happened because midnight club 2 obviously wasn't downloadable at the time that this was found but manhunt is being sold in a state where all of the anti-piracy stuff activates against itself it is a pirated version of the game that has anti-piracy stuff making it not work right it's legitimately insane that they're selling a game in this state, but it's not their first time. Again, Midnight Club 2 was sold, and it had a weird crashing bug too that people are now attributing to anti-piracy measures. Moving on to number five, Blizzard revealed the official ages for all of the Overwatch 2 characters, and well, it left a lot of people with questions. For instance, Kuriko, Genji, and Hanzo, all characters that are shown training together as children in official art, are well over 10 years apart from each other, making that impossible. That's the most blatant and discussed one I've seen. Many people have pointed that out. But there are some interesting things like a bunch of characters that are in their mid-60s. Look at Sigma. He's 64. That doesn't look like a 64-year-old to me. Reinhardt is 63. I mean, I could kind of believe he's 63, but he's a year younger than Sigma. How much work has Sigma had done is my question. Reaper is 60, but I guess that doesn't really matter. Reaper's wearing a mask. Reaper could look like crap for all we know. Maybe stay it out in the sun too much. Leather skin. Got a mask on. I don't want people to know. I should have used sunscreen. Higher SPF. The youngest character, by the way, is one years old. One year z year? One year old. It's a robot, so I mean that I guess sure. But if you look at this list, it's odd, to say at the very least. Moving on to number four, that was a crazy glitch in Destiny 2, it's just making the game silly. So there's quite a few details to it. It involves uh, perks and different levels of weapons and lots of stuff. But long story short, weapon frames could be merged. All right. So think about what that means. Perhaps the most popular implementation of this glitch was people putting shotgun frames on auto rifles, right? So shotgun blasts at a rate of automatic fire, which is bonkers. But to be fair, pretty cool also. Now Bungie rolled out a two-pronged plan to stop everybody from doing it, basically stopped everybody from crafting, period, for a while. Rolled back the ability to do this body merging thing, which roll I guess rolled back the weapons, I don't really know. But it's crazy. If you look at footage of anybody using one of these shotguns, it's easily the most overpowered looking thing ever. Like, people were 
soloing raid bosses is crazy. If I'm completely honest, it, it's fun looking. Like somebody needs to make a game where like the main character has a shotgun with an automatic firing rate. And if some person somewhere hasn't taken this glitch and gone, you know what? That's a game idea. Let me just go ahead and say, you have to cut me in now. <laughs> At number three, Capcom, or at least Capcom's chief operating officer, Haruhiro Tsuchimoto, has said Capcom would gracefully decline any acquisition offers from Microsoft. Now this is, is it comes from the fact that there was a big leak of Microsoft stuff, and Microsoft was like talking about the possibilities of buying tons of companies, because as you know, Microsoft just wants to own everything. They want to be a monopoly, clearly. And Capcom is just like, no, dude. Tsuchimoto also went on to say that Capcom prefers organic growth over buying out studios. Like, they aren't interested in acquiring companies. They're interested in growing internal studios and being Capcom, which is bad ass. That's, that's the kind of solid iron balls that we need more companies to have, honestly. Like, I realize that Capcom exists to make money, so, like, there's some element of unprincipled cynicism in here. But there is some principle there. Saying, no, I don't like the idea of Monopoly. I like the idea of us being our own company making our own stuff that's kind of what we're doing here i like that i wish there was more of that at number two asper and saber interactive are facing a class action lawsuit because they released knights of the old republic on switch how they did like to be frank this whole thing was bs asper and saber ported coder 2 to the switch saying a little bit down the line we're going to be releasing a dlc that is the restored content patch that people have modded into the game which restores a bunch of content uh basically finishes a bunch of content that wasn't finished due to time constraints that lucas arts put on obsidian the original developers of the game it is widely agreed by fans of the game that this is the only way to play the game so a lot of people bought the game with the assumption that the restored content DLC would be coming down the line and therefore they were going to wait on the game. They bought it to support it because obviously they wanted to make sure that the money was there to make the DLC and blah 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 but a year later Asper edited the reveal trailer so that it didn't have any mention of the DLC anymore which by the way was going to be free just so you don't think like oh they're leaving money on the table. They advertised that it was going to be free DLC and there's a class action loss about it now makes sense it's kind of bs that that's you know like that and i'm sure a lot of people just kind of don't really care about the money honestly they're just kind of pissed off that it didn't happen and hopefully whoever owns the rights to coder right now i'm pretty sure it's a parent company of asper is just like all right let's just let's just make this happen okay they're mad they deserve better let's do it that's my hope uh although that would probably be weirder than the fact that there's a class action lost to and then finally at number one um there's a weird discussion happening around the whole unity thing i don't know if you know about any of this you probably do unity announced that they were going to do a per install fee thing that basically made unity into the stupidest possible engine to use and everybody like everybody got mad and some people are saying well it looks like gamer boycotts are starting to work and I, I'm just going to go ahead and say, like, that's silly. Gamers didn't boycott Unity. Developers boycotted Unity. And in fact, developers are still coming together and saying, you know what? I don't trust Unity. We need to move to different engine. And it's hurting them. And the reason it's hurting them is because developers are talking to each other. It's not because, like, I just think the idea of framing it as a gamer boycott is weird. Beyond weird. People don't seem to understand that a consumer consumer boycott is very different from a labor boycott. A developer boycott is a labor boycott. And I think any games journalists that are covering it as a gamer boycott, making the implication of a consumer boycott, just don't understand power at all. I am personally really thankful that these developers 
were like, that's insane. I'm not a developer and obviously like it doesn't directly affect me, but I know that as a consumer, I basically have no real power in any of these situations. And if the developers didn't do something, I'd be the one that's ultimately screwed. So in my opinion, we all really need to give a big round of applause to these developers who coordinated and worked together because if they had to exist in a world where Unity charged a per install fee that could go beyond 2.5% of revenue, that's them being screwed and that makes making games less profitable and that means we're gonna get screwed the most because they have to make gaming profitable in order to make games. I don't necessarily agree that that's the best situation to be making games in, but it's the one that we're stuck with because that's how the world works. So again, I want to give a big round of applause to all the game devs that did not stand for Unity's BS, and I want to give a big pushback against anybody who's crediting gamer strikes. No, it's these developers that understand that we, the gamers, would be screwed. Anyways, that's all for this month. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks